Step into a world veiled in shadows and enigma as we journey through the corridors of time to unravel the enigmatic tales of ancient mysteries. In this captivating video, we delve deep into the annals of history where whispers of the past beckon us to unlock their secrets. From the majestic Kailasa Temple in India to the eerie allure of Stonehenge's ancient stones and the enigmatic Nazca lines etched upon the desert canvas, we embark on a visual odyssey that ignites the imagination and invites us to question the very essence of human ingenuity. First on this list we have the Stonehenge. Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument located in Wiltshire, England. It consists of a ring of standing stones, each around 13 feet high, 7 feet wide, and weighing approximately 25 tons. The purpose and construction methods of Stonehenge are still subjects of debate among archaeologists and researchers. It's believed to have been built in multiple phases between 3000 BC and 2000 BC and may have served as a ceremonial or religious site. The primary types of stones used in building Stonehenge are sarsen stones and blue stones. Sarsen stones are large sandstone blocks, some of which weigh as much as 25 tons. They form the outer circle and inner horseshoe of the monument. Blue stones are smaller stones, mainly composed of different types of igneous rock, such as dolerite and rhyolite. They were used for the inner circle and other parts of the monument. The transportation of these massive stones from their sources to the Stonehenge site is still a topic of great research and intrigue. The transportation of the massive stones to Stonehenge is one of the most intriguing and debated aspects of the monument's construction. There are different theories about how the stones were moved, but none are definitively proven due to the lack of direct historical records. However, there are some proposed methods by which the stones could have been transported to Stonehenge. The first theory suggests that the large sarsen stones were transported using a combination of logs and manpower. The stones could have been placed on logs, and the logs were then rolled, allowing the stone to move forward. This process, known as log rolling, would have required a large number of people working together. Another method involves using sledges made of wood and animal skins to transport the stones over land. The stones would be placed on the sledges, and then people or animals would pull the sledges across the terrain. But we have not yet found any definitive records conclusively pointing to this method. And the last theory suggests some of the stones, particularly the smaller blue stones, may have been transported via waterways. This theory suggests that the stones were placed on rafts or boats and floated down rivers before being moved overland to the Stonehenge site. But from what we've seen, it's possible that a combination of techniques was used depending on the type and size of the stones being transported. It's important to note that regardless of the method used, moving these massive stones would have required significant effort and coordination from a large number of people. The lack of definitive evidence means that the exact methods remain speculative, and researchers continue to study and experiment with different possibilities to better understand how the stones were transported to Stonehenge. This site is believed to have been used for astronomical alignments due to its layout and the positioning of its stones. During the summer solstice, the rising sun aligns with a heel stone outside the main circle, shining directly through the entrance and illuminating the central axis of the monument. Similarly, during the winter solstice, the setting sun aligns with the opposite side of the central axis. The alignment with the solstices suggests that Stonehenge could have been used as a calendar or an observatory to track the changing seasons. Some of the stones also align with other astronomical events, such as the positions of the moon and certain stars. While the exact purpose of these alignments remains a subject of further research, it's generally agreed that Stonehenge had some form of astronomical significance for the people who built and used it. The next historic monument on our list is the magnificent Kailasa Temple. The Kailasa Temple, also known as the Kailasanatha Temple, is a remarkable rock-cut cave temple located in the Ellora Caves complex in Maharashtra, India. It's one of the most impressive and renowned structures at Ellora. The temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva and is a masterpiece of Indian rock-cut architecture. Carved out of a single massive rock, 
The Kailasa Temple is notable for its intricate and detailed carvings that depict various mythological scenes, deities, and religious motifs. The temple complex includes a central shrine, a courtyard, and various other structures like halls and galleries. The entire temple was excavated from top to bottom, creating an awe-inspiring structure that appears as if it has been carved out of the surrounding rock. It's still a wonder how this structure was not included in the list of wonders of the world. The construction of the Kailasa Temple is estimated to have taken many years, with work beginning in the 8th century CE during the Rashtrakuta dynasty. The temple showcases the architectural and sculptural prowess of the artisans of that time. The Kailasa Temple is not only an architectural marvel, but also holds immense religious and cultural significance for Hindus. It continues to be a popular pilgrimage site and a UNESCO World Heritage Site, drawing visitors from around the world who are fascinated by its grandeur and historical importance. The Kailasa Temple is special for several reasons. Here are some of them. The temple is carved entirely out of a single massive rock, making it one of the largest monolithic structures in the world. The level of precision and craftsmanship required for such a feat is truly remarkable. The temple is adorned with intricate and detailed carvings that depict various mythological stories, deities, and scenes from Hindu epics. The level of detail and artistry in the carvings is awe-inspiring. The temple's design showcases the creativity and architectural brilliance of the craftsmen who carved it. The intricate layout, including courtyards, pillars, and sculptures, is a testament to their skill. The temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva, one of the most important deities in Hinduism. As a religious site, the Kailasa Temple holds great spiritual significance for devotees and pilgrims. The temple represents an important part of India's cultural heritage and architectural history. It serves as a reminder of the artistic achievements of ancient Indian civilizations. The engineering and logistical challenges involved in carving such a massive structure out of solid rock are astounding, highlighting the advanced technical capabilities of the time. All these factors combined make the Kailasa Temple a truly special and iconic monument, celebrated for its architectural magnificence and its contribution to India's rich cultural heritage. While the Kailasa Temple is a marvel of architecture and craftsmanship, there are certain aspects that continue to intrigue researchers and historians. The exact time frame in which the Kailasa Temple was carved remains a subject of debate. Given its intricate carvings and massive size, there's speculation about how long it took to complete, as well as the methods used to achieve such precision. The techniques used to carve such a complex and detailed structure out of solid rock are still not fully understood. The precision and intricacy of the carvings raise questions about the tools and methods employed. The motivation behind creating such an elaborate structure and the resources required for its construction remain intriguing. The temple's construction required significant manpower, engineering skill, and resources. The specific symbolism behind the temple's design, its intricate carvings, and its layout is a subject of interpretation. Researchers continue to explore the deeper meanings embedded within the temple's iconography. The logistics of carving out the temple from top to bottom, including the creation of its multi-level layout and various structures, raise questions about the planning and organization involved. Some researchers have suggested that the temple's central courtyard aligns with the sun during certain times of the year, potentially indicating an astronomical connection. However, this theory is still debated. The reasons behind carving the temple out of solid rock rather than constructing it using traditional building methods are not entirely clear. Understanding the motivation behind this approach adds to the mystery. Placing the construction of the Kailasa Temple in its broader historical context and understanding how it fits into the cultural and religious practices of its time can be challenging due to limited historical records. Overall, the Kailasa Temple's enigmatic construction, intricate carvings, and the skills required for its creation continue to spark curiosity and investigation among scholars and visitors alike. The third ancient marvel on our list is the Gobekli Tepe. 
Göbekli Tepe is an ancient archaeological site located in southeastern Turkey. It is considered one of the most important and intriguing archaeological discoveries of recent times. The site consists of a series of circular stone structures and pillars that were erected by ancient people over 12,000. Göbekli Tepe is one of the oldest known human-made structures in the world. It predates other well-known ancient sites like Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. The site comprises multiple circular enclosures or temples, each made up of large stone pillars arranged in a circle. These pillars are adorned with intricate carvings of animals, symbols, and more. The level of sophistication in the carvings and the precision of the construction suggests that the builders possessed advanced knowledge of architecture and engineering for their time. Gobekli Tepe challenges previous assumptions about the development of human civilization. It implies that complex communal activities, such as religious rituals or gatherings, were taking place much earlier than previously believed. Some evidence suggests that the site might have been associated with burial practices, although this aspect is not entirely understood. The site is often interpreted as a ceremonial or ritual center. The carvings of animals and symbols could be representations of religious or mythological significance. The construction of such monumental structures may have played a role in shaping social dynamics and encouraging more organized forms of human settlement. Archaeological work at Gobekli Tepe began in the 1990s, and ongoing excavations continue to reveal new insights into the site's significance and the lives of the people who built it. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe challenges our understanding of the timeline of human development and the complexity of early societies. It sheds light on the capabilities and behaviors of ancient humans, offering valuable insights into the cultural and social evolution of our species. The site is intriguing for several compelling reasons. The site's estimated age of around 12,000 years challenges the conventional timeline of human history. It suggests that advanced construction and communal activities were occurring much earlier than previously thought. The intricate carvings and precision of the stone pillars at Gobekli Tepe indicate a high level of architectural skill and craftsmanship. The complexity of the site's design raises questions about the knowledge and organization of its builders. The purpose of Gobekli Tepe as a ceremonial or ritual center challenges assumptions about early human societies. It suggests that organized religion or communal practices played a significant role in shaping social dynamics and community structures. The construction of such a monumental and intricately decorated site implies a level of cognitive development and social coordination that pushes back the boundaries of our understanding of ancient societies. The site's construction required the quarrying, shaping, and transport of massive stones, a feat that would have required advanced techniques and tools for the time. The elaborate carvings of animals and symbols on the stone pillars hint at a complex belief system or mythological narrative. Deciphering the meaning of these carvings adds to the intrigue. Gobekli Tepe suggests that the construction of monumental structures may have been a catalyst for the development of more organized settlement patterns and the emergence of social hierarchies. The discovery of Gobekli Tepe raises questions about the origins of civilization, agriculture, and complex human behaviors. It invites researchers to reevaluate their understanding of the key factors that led to the rise of early civilizations. The site was intentionally backfilled and buried by its builders, which helped preserve its architecture and artifacts. This deliberate action raises questions about the reasons for its burial and abandonment. Ongoing excavations continue to yield new insights, challenging existing interpretations, and contributing to our evolving understanding of the site's significance. All of these combined factors make Gobekli Tepe a unique and enigmatic archaeological site that has captured the attention of researchers and the public alike, offering a glimpse into the complex and mysterious world of ancient human societies. And finally, the fourth ancient marvels on our list are the Nazca Lines. The Nazca Lines are a series of ancient geoglyphs etched into the desert floor in the Nazca Desert of southern Peru. These enormous designs, ranging from simple lines to intricate figures, cover an area of about 450 square kilometers 
or 174 square miles. The lines were created by removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert, revealing the lighter-colored ground beneath. The Nazca lines are famous for their massive size and the fact that they can only be fully appreciated from the air. Some of the figures are quite large, with some spanning hundreds of meters. The designs include various shapes such as animals, birds, mammals, fish, geometric patterns, and human figures. The purpose and method of creating the Nazca lines remain subjects of debate and speculation among researchers and archaeologists. Some theories suggest that they had ceremonial or religious significance, possibly linked to astronomical observations, while others propose they were used for rituals related to water and fertility. The lines are thought to have been created by the Nazca people between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The Nazca lines are a UNESCO World Heritage Site and an iconic archaeological mystery, drawing tourists and researchers from around the world who are captivated by their sheer scale and enigmatic origins. These lines are shrouded in mystery due to several intriguing aspects. The size and complexity of the Nazca lines, many of which can only be fully appreciated from the air, raise questions about how and why they were created on such a large scale. The lines and figures are remarkably precise and symmetrical, even though they were created without the aid of modern technology. The ability to maintain such accuracy over large distances is puzzling. The exact purpose and meaning of the lines remain unknown. Various theories suggest they might have been created for religious or ceremonial purposes, for astronomical observations, as a form of art, or to mark underground water sources. How the Nazca people managed to create such large and intricate designs on the desert floor without a bird's eye view remains a mystery. The methods they used to plan and create the lines and figures are still debated. Some lines align with certain astronomical phenomena, leading to speculation that they might have been used for astronomical observations. However, the exact nature of these alignments is still uncertain. The Nazca lines are a product of the Nazca culture, but the extent to which they represent broader cultural beliefs, practices, and symbolism is not fully understood. The time frame during which the lines were created and used is not well documented. Deciphering the chronology and understanding changes in their use over time is complex. The creation of the Nazca lines required significant coordination and labor. Understanding the social organization and the roles of different individuals in their construction remains a mystery. The combination of their grand scale, the precision of their design, and the lack of definitive historical records has turned the Nazca lines into an enduring enigma that continues to captivate researchers and visitors alike. Their mysterious origins and purpose make them a subject of ongoing archaeological investigation and speculation. In closing, we extend heartfelt gratitude to our dedicated viewers who are so keen to learn and explore about our past. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to share your thoughts 